so regarding guys who you know would hire prostitutes um you know they it's pretty much for credits or for um canteen items you know a lot of these deals are i don't know how they're even done if people are um like openly discussing these things or you know they pass notes to each other but in general when uh guys do use prostitutes it's something that everybody knows or they'll find out which you know to me doesn't seem like a great thing that you know you're you're the hooker that you're you know shocking up with for that one time you know can't even keep it a secret so that that is one of the downsides of if you want to hook up with guys or a prostitute uh in this situation that everybody will find out it's impossible to keep a secret when you're locked up because people have nothing better to do and they just want to talk about each other behind your back in front of your face you know that's how i like to call it um but if you know you're you're looking for more of a relationship uh type of thing i don't know i i, I don't think i got to see much of that because just the makeup of the people in my unit didn't seem like there was a lot of that going on now there were these two guys that were kind of on my side of the um of the room that they were the fitness addicts so one very very cute latino guy very much in shape and he had his buddy i guess who's um white guy bald bald head but like totally hairy off uh hairy everything else he had like a hairy chest a back he was just like uh but they were both kind of similar heights and they pretty much spent their entire days together that they would uh work out uh from the prison workout books that they had and um they would do um pull-ups on the pull-up bars uh you know the the latino guy he was one of the workers who helped with serving meals and stuff like that so he had some work to do but otherwise yeah they they pretty much um i wouldn't call it a relationship i don't think it was sexual in any way but they they pretty much they took care of each other uh and that was the way it was um you know and and part of being in jail i will talk i'll probably talk about this in a future video in light of the changes in the world is that there there had been so many people who were um in custody because of uh ice and because they you know if they're facing a case uh and they're convicted even though they have lived in the United States for a long time, uh, permanent resident, they can be deported. So we had some of those folks in in the unit who who were really there, who actually probably didn't even have any criminal history, but it, because it was their first offense and that it fell under kind of this uh the deportation rules which really trace back to the obama years um that you, you know you see these people who just wouldn't fit your conception of who who are the inmates that should be are being locked up in jail right now so um but in terms of uh you know i i think everybody wants to kind of joke around and say oh yeah i have a girlfriend or i have a wife waiting for me outside and you know all that um but there's also a lot of guys who don't want to talk about their personal uh family and you know loved ones i never talked about my um who you know what that i was gay with folks uh the only thing they all knew for sure that i was very attached to my mom 
I talked a lot about my mom and I talked a lot about my phone calls with my mom so that they understood that my primary uh, mission is to get out of jail so I can see my mom. So, um, although, you know, there were other people who kind of knew, knew just by looking at me that, oh yeah, this person's not straight. So, but, um, now does being gay mean that you're going to get hit up? And I told, I talked a little bit about this in my, one of my first videos, uh, uh, when I first got into the unit and the answer is yes, you're going to get hit on. And I think what is hard for people is more that they, they, you probably don't get hit on, on the outside and you're suddenly doing having to deal with guys hitting on you in jail, which is probably the, is that irony or just gross something? I don't know. Um, that that's the reason why you know it just seems weird. Uh, I I can tell you in general, yeah, no, I don't get hit on by by guys uh, outside of jail. So, um, and you know the people who who would flirt with me while I was in that unit. These are good looking guys. Like one of one of the guys uh, who kind of really made sure that I, he like I understood he was interested. He he worked out all the time. He had bulging muscles. He uh, of course walked around shirtless all the time so everyone can look at his body and he would always try to comment about how pretty my hair was which um in probably normal circumstances that would sound very creepy but he he is actually one of the barbers in the unit so he can actually cut my hair and you know i'm sure i'm sure there could have been a deal where he cut my hair you know and then i i returned the favor in some way now he was a good looking guy, but I think one of the hard parts for him is that he was kind of caught up with all the younger guys, you know, the troublemakers, the ones with the attitudes. He was kind of their mentor, their daddy, like he took care of them. And I, I personally didn't think that was a really smart move on his part. I think he's, he's at the age where you should expect for things to be quiet and things to be more mature. Uh, but he chose to be on the loud side of the room uh, versus, you know, being on the side with the rest of us. Um, but one thing I do remember is that he, he, uh, he likes watching TV with me. So when I sit down and watch TV on the couch, um, he'll always come up and want to sit next to me. Uh, uh, put his arms, you know, on the back of the, of the couch and stuff like that. So that was, that was some of our pastime is just watching TV together. Uh, and because I, you know, obviously he's been, he's been locked up for a while. I'd tell him, oh, I've seen this before and I'll explain to him. I remember what he wanted to watch the most was, um, the Scorpion King. Uh, which had The Rock and I think it was Kelly Who in it. And he thought Kelly Who was so sexy. Yeah, she she was very pretty in that movie. And and he would tell me how how, how he loves movies like that. And to me, uh, it would have been a red flag. I'm like, The Rock is pretty hot in The Scorpion King too. So I didn't really know what, what clues he was trying to send me there. But um, yeah, but he was one of the guys that kind of immediately made it clear that he thought I was cute. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about a younger guy who was interested in me in a separate video because I actually have more to talk about him. But um, in terms of just how do you deal with that as a person, um, you know, whether or not you take compliments well or not, the thing you kind of have to do is you still need to kind of be there, be present and acknowledge people, their presence, their words are sometimes like people will say things and you, you may not have the words reply back, but 
you just have to honestly sometimes just look people in the eyes and, and kind of something I learned is, is from John Wick. You you say their name and then, uh, you know, say, I'll see you later. You know, if you say if his name is Joe, so Joe, I'll talk to you later. Just do it like that. And and that that I think generally diffuses a lot of, of tension, whether it's sexual tension or whatever tension it is. Uh, when you acknowledge people by their name and and say to them, "I'll see you later," um, it's worked for me. And on the on the night that I was supposed to finally get out of jail, I, wa I wanted to tell to talk to him just to let him know that I am praying for him that he'll get out soon. But he was kind of caught up with the younger guys, which is you know unfortunate. I didn't get to really talk to him a little bit more. But you know, and and I think like part of it is you know he's a big muscular dude. You know, try, trying to trying to get my attention. That, of course, attracts the attention of all the other guys watching him kind of chase me around the unit. So, um, but I get it. And this, th I will tell you, even though this guy may look scary on the street because he's built like crazy, he is the softest, biggest kind of teddy bear heart that I'm sure that you can expect that's that's the people who are locked up. They're not, not everybody is a, you know, psychopathic killer criminal, you know, who's, who's just waiting for the day to get out. Uh, so I, I have a lot of respect for people like that. You know, he, he, he was just looking for someone to chill with. Um, I probably didn't, didn't get, get him his wish, but you know, I, I still take it as, oh my God, I have my magic still going. <laughs> you know, maybe I need to dial it down. So, uh, so this is my my not so quick video on talking about what is it like to be gay and in jail. Do you have any questions about uh, my experience or how it's like? You know, I'll, t I'll talk a little bit more about specific individuals that I've encountered and you know, how it's worked through, but, um, you know, uh, it's something that has really been a transformative experience for me. So definitely want to share more. So, uh, subscribe if you haven't, uh, click the like button. Uh, that definitely helps with my channel. Uh, ask me a question in the comments if you are confused about anything or if I, you know, I was not clear about anything. Uh, I, I think this is more of a continuation from some of my previous video, but, you know, I'll talk more about the kid in a future video. So look out for that, all right? So if you're subscribed, you'll get an update when that gets up, and I will talk to you soon.